All right, guys, just a little channel update for you. I'm on the lazy boy here with my legs in the air, trying to stay comfortable. Now, that first Thailand video that you've seen, some of you, especially if you're watching on the big screen, will have noticed that my right leg looked a bit of a mess. Yeah, uh, varicose veins, varicose eczema, puffiness, swelling, discoloration, the whole works. So I came back off holiday on the 3rd of April and there was a letter from me from the hospital saying they'd had a cancellation. Do I want to come in on the 14th? And of course I jumped at the chance, this being the start of the season, rather than waiting for an appointment in the middle of the season. So I've been in and I've had veins removed from my right leg and uh, about three days ago it looked a bit like this and uh, the bandages have come off I've had to put a stocking on and now it looks a bit like this I don't want any comments about that being sexy green lycra thank you very much it's an absolute pig to get on because I've got 25, 26 small incisions in my leg where they pull the veins out and what have you. So it's an absolute pig to get on. So, so why am I telling you personal stuff? Well, firstly, if you did notice and you thought, should I ask Simon what that is or not? Well, now you don't have to ask. Now you know what it is. It's an old man thing. It's a sitting behind a desk for 32 years thing. So that's done. I'm now off work for two weeks, maybe a fraction more, depends how the recovery goes. But when I sit down, I've got to sit with my feet up. And as I say, I'm on a lazy boy here with my, with my feet right up. So I can't sit at my desk to work, which also means I can't sit at my desk to edit. And I have got an absolute ton of editing to do. Fortunately, what I'm making here doesn't really require any editing. So I've got two videos uploaded. I've got a third one which is 90% done that just requires uh, a voiceover. And I can do that with the laptop on my lap here. But if you, if you imagine you've got a laptop with a small screen and in the editing software you've got the timeline, you've got all your editing tools, and the actual picture is, is like that. So when I'm in my office editing, the laptop is plugged into a huge screen, so I can see what the hell I'm doing. And of course I can't do that, I can't drag everything into the lounge here and prop it up on the, on the, old, on the old settee and, and try and do editing. Now I don't think there is a danger of me running out of videos because once I finish the voiceover on that other one that will take me up to approximately the 3rd or 4th of May by which time I should be should have been given permission to actually um, sit at my desk. What I'm not going to do when I get back to work is to spend 8 hours sat at my desk working and then promptly switch to the home computer and spend five hours editing. I think, I think that would be pushing the envelope too much on my recovery. So what I'll probably do is, is come away and then later in the evening go back and do, put, the, put a timer on my phone and do one hour. So it will take me five evenings to do a video as opposed to just bashing the keyboard for five hours one evening. So what's this got, got to do with golf? Well, obviously I'm not going to be playing golf for a little while, which means I'm not going to be making videos for a little while. That doesn't matter because I've got a pile. But what it does change is my schedule. So at the end of April, I was going to go to Lemster and play with the Assistant Pro. Well, I can't possibly do that. I'm still in recovery. So I'm sorry. I think, it's, I think his name was Josh. So I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. 
that'll get put on the back burner. But the back burner is very overcrowded with golf courses that I wanted to go to and I haven't been. There was two courses I was going to go to in April 2020 which have sentimental value to me. So that's, that's what made those two important. And um, I didn't go in 2020, I didn't go in 2021. So I, I looked at my, the list, I got a list in my office of golf courses I want to visit this year. And I've just torn it up because I'm not going to be playing golf for a little while. Then when I get back to it, I'm going to be playing bad golf. Now, I'm not embarrassed about me showing you bad golf. You've, you've seen me shooting 12 over to 15 over before. I don't mind showing you that. Um, you could take the piss out of me in the comments when I have a bad day like that. We all do. I'd be a liar if I said I didn't. What I don't want to do is to jump in the car, drive 70 miles, pay a green fee, shoot 15 over, and then drive 70 miles back again. That's, that just seems a little crazy. Um, so the start of my away days, for want of a better description, is going to be delayed. And as I say, those two sentimental courses are going to come top of the list. Now I've just had my birthday and the boys want to take me out. So I've picked a golf course for us to go to when I'm fit. I will record it and chances are I will play a bit crap but I want to play with my boys. See the boys are still on the waiting list for Lilybrook. The first tranche of joiners have got in at the beginning of April. The second tranche will get in at the beginning of May. They don't have handicaps. They're beginner golfers. They're both shooting around 100 to 105. So my two sons are going to be my priority this year. Over everything else, my two boys rule the roost. So, last year I went to West Monmouthshire, you know, the one with the highest tee box in the UK. And I said I'd go back for a YouTube day and I'd invite you guys to turn up. And I know that the number of people who wanted to come was very small because it's a bit out in the wilds and it's a bit of a drive for everybody. So, I think this year that is going to be sacrificed. I will go back myself because I want to play the white tees. I want to let that golf course take its revenge on me basically for your amusement. If I, you know, if I think about it, you know, the 13th tee was 90 yards back. So, if I listen carefully, I can hear the 13th tee laughing at me from here. But I think the idea of having a YouTube day when I'm going to miss so much of the start of the season and, and my boys are my priority, I, I think that might go by the wayside. <sighs> right. There's no adverts on this video. And I'm not going to put adverts on this type of video. Um, there's two ways of putting adverts on. One is automatically. So you allow YouTube to do its thing and it puts them on automatically. Or you can do it manually. Now I don't want to do it manually because then I've got to pick the the points in the video where I want to put adverts and what type of advert. I'd rather YouTube do it because believe it or not YouTube are rather sensible at putting adverts on. Although I did see a financial advert that was when I looked at it it was an hour and 40 minutes I think so I, I hope you all hit skip on that one. I hit skip on that one. Now, I do know that there's guys out there who do put, vid put adverts on manually. And they'll put five or six adverts in the first five or six minutes. Because the greater majority of people have already switched off. They watch five or six minutes and they're gone. Perhaps that's the amount of time it takes them to take a dump. I don't know. They're watching on their phone in the toilet. Probably. <coughs> so 
sorry, I'm pretty rough at the moment. Where they have the tube down your throat, it, it kind of, you just got to drink, keep drinking and drinking and drinking. I got a sore throat. I was actually watching a video, um, it was in lockdown, so it's got to be spring of 2020. And the first comment at the top was, six adverts in six minutes, you're taking the piss, mate. So I watched the video. Because I like to watch other guys' videos, I like to look at their style, what kind of captions they're using, and see how they create a video. And I watched the golf as well. So I got to the end of the video and I, th I thought, I need to go back to that first comment because the guy's right. There was five or six adverts in the first five or six m minutes and I knew that they had been put on manually by somebody who's, as Frank Zappa would say, only in it for the money. So I went back to the comments, the comment had gone. So obviously the creator of that video had decided that he didn't want any negative stuff and uh, obviously blocked the person. Such is uh, social media these days. So that's the little update. I'm basically unable to play golf for a little while unable to edit for a little while and when I obviously when I get back to golf it's going to be a bit untidy. Now the, the right thing to do would be for when I, I go back to golf I may only be able to play the front nine I might not be able to walk up the hill for a little while so I'll, I'll be playing nine holes and then nine holes and then nine holes and then if there is a pattern to my mistakes not the short game, not interested in chipping and putting, I'll fix that myself. But if there is a pattern to my full golf swing, I can then go and see Matt and he can have a few tweaks. Except I can't, because unfortunately Matt's contract at the golf club has been terminated and there's a new guy coming in. And I don't want to see the new guy, because the new guy is uh, um, a method teacher. Now. If you are a good teacher, you will teach um, a 60 year old lady, a 60 year old man, all right, I'm not 60, but you know, a guy who's got a stiff back and a stiff neck, who's five foot five tall, you will teach completely differently to somebody who's 24 years old, got a handicap of two and looking to get to scratch and drives it 300 yards. You have to teach every person as an individual. Method teachers tend to be you'll hit the ball my way and my way only. And one size fits all does not work in golf. You know I've said many times Sam Sneed aims over there, Lee Trevino aims over there and they're both right because your golf swing suits you. Now you may get out of sync, you may get a few issues like, like I do from time to time. It's, we all slip into slightly bad habits and usually the same bad habits every time. But you go have a couple of lessons and somebody gives you a few tweaks and all of a sudden you're finding fairway. The last thing you want, especially if you're a fader of a golf ball like me, is to go to a teacher who says, you will draw the ball and you will do as I tell you. That is my method. Method teachers are a waste of space. Don't go to them. I mean, I'm certain that if you've seen the adverts on my videos, you will have seen a Hank Haney video about if you do it my way, you will hit the ball 300 yards or whatever. I, I can't remember what claim he makes. But it's crap. It, it is absolute crap. <laughs> you know, you've got to swing the club your way and find you know, the face and the path angle that match it that gets the ball in the fairway. If 75% of us come over the top, so we're faders, we move the ball 
if we're right-handed, we move the ball left to right, and if we're left-handed, we move the ball right to left. So we're coming in from out to in, and if the if you if you've aimed correctly, and the club face is one and a half degrees open, it hits the fairway. If we've aimed incorrectly, and the club face is clo is significantly closed or significantly open then we miss the fairway and the same goes the opposite for the drawers but there's no way that you can take an individual like myself who's aiming left whose swing path is right to left and his cub place is a fraction open to that path there's no way you can take me and turn me into somebody who draws the ball it just just doesn't happen I can hit a draw if I really think about it and I get my setup correctly, then I can find a left hand flag with my six iron. If I'm looking for a right hand flag, I don't have to think at all. I just aim at the left edge of the green and swing. And there, there it goes, it's fading towards the middle of the green. So yeah, I've, I've a lot of us said to Matt, you know, wherever you go, we will come to you for lessons. But at the moment, he hasn't found a position. Now, another strange thing that the new guy has said, and they're building a new pro shop for him, is he said, there, isn't much la there aren't many ladies' clothes in this pro shop. I'm going to put in an entire wall of ladies' clothes. Well, he's not going to sell them. Because ladies do not buy golf clothes in pro shops, other than the club jumper with the logo on, or the club shirt with the logo on. They'll buy they'll buy those, but they don't buy other things. See, ladies like to. Ha a man will walk into a pro shop, strip his top off, and say, "Can I try that shirt on?" And in front of everybody, show off his fat gut and his and his man boobs, and put a shirt on and go, "Yeah, that fits," and buy it. Lady wants a changing room. Now obviously golf clubs have got changing rooms, but that means that they've got to leave the pro shop and go to their changing rooms. It's a fraction inconvenient. They want a changing room. They want a female attendant. They don't want a group of men buying, who are buying tea pegs and Mars bars to see them go through the process of Oh, excuse me. Go through the process of buying clothes. You know, there's a reason that when you go into a clothes shop uh, the men's floor and the ladies' floor are are apart, and if you go up to the ladies' floor, all you will see is three bored husbands. They keep us apart because ladies not only require their privacy when they're trying clothes, they they deserve some privacy when they're trying clothes. They don't want a a man to see to see them coming out of changing rooms and looking in mirrors and going back into changing rooms and trying different things and they don't want a male on the till who sees what size clothing they've bought so his plan to fill the golf shop with female clothes is, is going to be a fail women just don't buy their clothes that way anyway that's the update I can edit this video because all I'm going to do is chop two seconds off, off the beginning and two seconds off, off at the end while I'm reaching for the camera off button and struggling with my bad leg to get out of this chair. And I don't have to put any captions on other than a couple of photographs, which is a piece of cake. And I'll do that all on my lap here. But uh, for the moment, it's all a little bit pear-shaped. But uh, don't worry, I'm going to be back out playing and I'll be back in my little room over there doing some editing. I, I say, I'm absolutely certain I'm not going to run out. But if I do, don't worry. It will just be a fortnight before the next video comes out instead of a week. And that's going to be... that's what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to put main videos out once a week 
and then every now and then if I think of a short video then I'll bang that out midweek. So it's going to be 8-9 minutes midweek and 18-20 minutes Saturday mornings. <sighs> Do you know what? I'm absolutely bored just sat around. I can walk short distances at the moment and by short distances I'm talking about par 3 distances. I, I, I'm no good at sitting still doing nothing. Thanks for listening. Cheerio. I think one of the dogs have farted. <laughs>